Hi everybody, it's Kristen again. I'm finally back. Thanks so much for watching this video. I wanted to apologize, first of all, for not um, coming out with any new content in the past couple of weeks. I had some health issues that had been ongoing and then that ultimately led to a surgery. And it, while it wasn't super serious, it still did require recovery and more so than I thought. So I apologize again for the extended absence, but I'm back with another video today, obviously. Um, that was kind of dumb on my part. This is going to be version two of an Outlander cowl. Um, there's two different cowls that Claire wears in the show. One is the one that I made in my previous Outlander video, which was the big garter stitch chunky knitted cowl on the giant needles. And then this version is um, the is based loosely, I say loosely, on the mink version that she wears in the show. There's a mink cowl that she wears in a few episodes and it's just so beautiful. But I, I tried to replicate it the best I could, but it's kind of near impossible to get it to look exactly the same because I'm not sure what kind of fabric was used. Um, I think it was probably either faux or even real mink into strands that was actually knitted. Um, I think just off of some costume related blogs and some research and some forums, that's what I've come to gather, but it may be wrong. So I'm not exactly sure what was used to knit hers, but I'll talk about in a little bit what I used to knit mine. Um, basically this is what my version looks like. I came up with this by myself, and in the following minutes I'm going to tell you exactly how I did it. It's very simple. Um, it's super straightforward and easy to do because you don't have to connect anything together. It's just knitting in the round and, until you're happy with it and there's a lot of room to customize it and make it your own so if you want to see how to do this please keep watching okay so now that you've seen that there are two versions of this that we can do you can either choose one or the other or you can do both at different times it does not matter I just came up with two options um, and two different ways to do them depending on your personal preferences so there's the snood version and a snood if you haven't heard of that is basically just I hadn't heard of that until I looked at this project but um, a snood is basically a cowl that instead of just going and covering your neck, it falls over your shoulders as well. So it kind of drapes over the top part of your shoulders so there's extra added warmth and things like that, especially if you're wearing a dress. So a snood is a really awesome thing. The second version is uh, just a neck cowl. So just basically um, something that would just cover from, you know, the bottom of your neck to the top here and hang, you know, more closer to your neck or looser depending on how many you cast on. So we'll get into that. Okay, so for the snood version, only the cast on is going to be different. For the snood, you want to make sure that you have enough cast on that's going to go around the width of your shoulders. So anywhere from like 180 to 250 stitches should be sufficient. Mine is around 180. I'm not sure if it was like 180 or 185. It was something random at the time, but that should do it. I'm about a small to medium, usually a medium. But you would go by your shirt size. So if you're small to medium, then you would do about like 180. And if you were large to extra large, you would go about 250 stitches. So it's not anything Thing, it, precise or exact but like whatever you think would would fit around your shoulders and you'll be able to see that on your circular needle so when you see your amount of cast on you can kind of eyeball it and think will this go around my shoulders it's usually pretty easy to figure out it's not shouldn't be really anything complicated So for the cowl only version, you're going to want to do about 120 stitches to 140 stitches. It's all up to you, but 120 to 140 should do it. And again, when you see it on your circular needles, you can eyeball it and think, is this big enough for me? Is it not? Basically, that's all I did is I just sat there and kind of analyzed it. And, you know, you can draw the circular needles around your shoulders, around your neck, and just whatever is there to your preference. But 120 to 140 is a good starting point. Okay, so quickly before I start, I wanted to talk about yarn selections and a few of the things that you can choose from if you're not familiar with this kind of yarn. Um, I'll talk about the one that I use, but first I wanted to let you know that I have linked a few more suggestions down below in the description box. There's like three or four types of yarn that's the kind of along the same lines as the one that I bought. So the one I used in this, this cow right here is Burnout Boa, and that's what the packaging looks like, hopefully you can see. And this is in the colorway Dark Mink. 
Um, and what I love about this is it was inexpensive. It was great. I got it. I think I ordered it from Walmart and it came site to store. So that was good. And then the color looks just how the color variation in Real Mink would look. So I mean, I know it doesn't look exactly Real Mink. I get it. But it still was a really good option for me. So I've also linked that down below in the same colorway that I have used right here. So hopefully it's easy for you to find. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to talk about this and how thin this is. Basically, it's just eyelash type fabric connected to this little tiny thin band. And I don't, I don't, I'm so, so sorry. I don't really deal with fabric that much. There's, there's kind of a fabric that I'm trying to compare this to, but I can't think of it, so I'll just spare everybody. But it's so thin that knitting this, even if you held two strands together, seeing these tiny little bands to knit every single stitch would just be too complicated and I think you would really struggle to see what you were knitting and everything like that. So I came up with the idea of using another worsted weight yarn with it. Now I think this is actually fingering weight, I'm not sure, but this is Line Brand Heartland and Sequoia. And I thought that held together they would, this would kind of seamlessly blend in with the Burnett Boa. So basically what I've done is I've taken a strand of this and held it with a strand of the Boa. And so when you knit both of these together, not only does it thicken it up so it's not sparse and your Burnett bow is not like have gaping holes in it. Um, forgive me, I have some of this up my nose right now. But another, th and I think I just inhaled it even further up there. But what it does also is it gives you a good um, solid piece of yarn to see every stitch and you can easily knit it as opposed to just trying to knit this eyelash fabric by itself. That would be really difficult. So for that I do suggest whatever yarn you use, dad, go ahead. Whatever yarn you use um, for the mink part, you might also want to use another worsted weight or fingering, whatever you've got on hand um, that would blend in with it so that you can um, easily knit it. So that's all I have to say before I get started. Now on to the demo. Okay, so this is my cow laid flat. Um, this is the basic outline of it. I'm not even sure what shape this is, but basically what I did, I cast on the 180 around the bottom so that I have the option to wear it as a snood. And I went on, just knitted, straight knitted for about six inches or so. And then that's when I started to alter it by doing some decreases. And I'll kind of come up with a basic pattern um, on how I did it, and I'll write that down below. But basically I just did, after the six inches, I just did about um, a knit two together every eight stitches or so, eight to ten stitches, and then um, I skipped four rows, and then I did the decreases over again until I got to the top. I wanted it to be a very gradual decreasing process because I wanted the um, top of the cow to still be a little bit drapey. Um, but, but I did want it to hang a little bit closer to the neck, but not um, tight. So I'll talk about that more in a few minutes. Okay, so I've started the cast on here. I'm about halfway through and I just wanted to show you how that is and how that's coming. These are size 10 needles before I forget to mention. I do suggest using a 10, but if you have like a nine and don't have a 10 or have an 11, don't have the 10, then use whatever you have on hand. It's not worth, you know, buying a specific pair of needles just for this, but, um, cause anything will, will technically do. But, um, so as you can see here, I've got the Heartland and the Boa. And I tied those c together at the beginning before I started the cast on. So I'm going to get the rest of these on and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I've already got it joined and I've been knitting here. Um, have a few, about 20 or 30 stitches knit. And I just wanted to show you how it knits up. And how, it, at first it can be kind of hard to knit the Heartland and the Boa together. But you get used to it. You just got to, you know, get familiar with the texture. And get used to seeing both kinds of of yarn on your needle. And once you get the hang of that, it's really, really simple. So I wanted to just throw a little disclaimer out there. If this pattern is not um, precise or exact enough for you as far as instructions, like there's not a, a clear set of rules as far as decreasing and as far as number of stitches goes, then you're welcome to look up, you know, another kind of pattern or something that you know, if you want to just go exactly by a pattern and not, you know, have any room for customization and things like that, then that's totally fine. And I just wanted to throw that out there and suggest that to you if it's something that you might want. Because I'm sure there's patterns out there. I just thought that this was the best way to do it because, you know, just going by 
size of your shoulders and what you want as you go I think that's actually the best way sometimes especially with a project like this because let me show you my already finished cow here it's just so forgiving because of the the texture of it and the fluffiness and the mink look and you can hardly even see my heartland in there but you can't you kind of can the heartland kind of fills all the holes and you know you're not able to see um decreases and increases or even if you missed a stitch you really probably wouldn't even be able to see it um so that's the good thing about this i also didn't even have to use a stitch marker now that's totally up to you you can definitely do it if you want but there really was no need because like i said it's just very forgiving um you can't see there's no way to tell where I did decreases because of the because of the yarns used so again like I said feel free to search out another pattern if you want something that's more like go exactly by the book kind of thing so this is how it should be looking you know just that's only my second row and it's already that nice plushy mink look so that pretty much sums it up besides the pattern down below Okay, everybody. Well, that about sums it up. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up um, and subscribe if you want to. I'm constantly trying to come out with new helpful things and things that maybe I figured out that there's not that many videos or um, instructions for out there. I really like to be as helpful as possible when it comes to knitting. And I'm really going to try to come out with more Outlander inspired stuff too because I'm sure with it starting back in another couple of months I'm probably going to be inspired by everything I see on the show. And I will try to come up with my own kind of inspired things and make videos about them since that seems to be um, something that is of interest to a lot of people. So if you have any questions or comments please leave them down in the comments below and I will do my best to get back with you on that and help you in any way I can. So thanks again and I hope you have a great day. Yes, uh, this is a framed portrait of Jamie Fraser. Um, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, why were there, what's, that's not a,